Hello, everyone. My name is Shuangleng Kang. So today I will present our work, set a string, a certified string solver. So let's get started. String solver uh, is, decide, is designed to decide the satisfiability of uh, formulas in string series. Uh, string formulas actually incorporate various of string operations like concatenations. Here, the plus of right means the concatenation and the regular constraints, which restricts the value of a verb X into a regular language. Replacement operator will replace a substring in a string and match the pattern with the replacement string. And the other string operators like a replace all capture groups and back references. So I give an example of a string constraint. This string constraint has the three uh, regular regular expressions R1, R2, and R3. It has uh, one concatenation constraint and one replacement constraint. So the task of a uh, string solver is to decide whether there is an assignment to the set of variables x1, x5, then satisfies the above string constraint. So the, um, actually, string constraint has um, been string solver has been widely used in the verification of software systems. For example, it is it has been used in the detection of web security vulnerabilities such as uh, cross-site scripting attacks. It can also be used in the symbolic execution analysis of JavaScript and PHP programs, because JavaScript and PHP has a lot of uh, string operations. Moreover, we can also use the uh, string servers for the access control policy checking in cloud computing. Uh, for example, Amazon Web Service and Microsoft Cloud, we use uh, string server for the access control policy checking. But can we blindly trust uh, existing string servers? Um, actually, recently, Mm, software engineering researchers, we already use uh, fuzzy testing to uncover a lot of uh, bugs in string solvers. This is actually, this means that we need certified string solvers. This is the motivation of our work. Okay, now let's have a look at the overview of uh, our tool, the city string. So it consists of two parts, the front end and the back end. Front end will translate to the uh, uh, string constraints to the IDS, which is short for intermediate data structures, which is the input to the back end of our string server. It also translates regular expressions to NFS. The results will be set, unset, or unknown. Okay, so now we introduce the fragment of the string constraints and uh, certain string supports. So it is called the theory of a string with concatenation and regular constraints. It has uh, it has uh, it supports um, the regular constraints and the concatenation constraints and the con conjunction of uh, two con of two string constraints. Okay, even though this theory is simple, but uh, this theory actually is the basis of pretty much all series of uh, strings. Um, for example, monadic class functions can be translated to regular constraints. And the destruction string constraint can also be solved using our fragment of uh, string constraints. Okay, now let's, uh, let, now let's, um, let's go deeper to the algorithm of our tool. Um, here we firstly introduce the forward propagation algorithm. We introduce it by an example in this example, it has five variables with five regular constraints and two concatenation constraints. For the propagation, we will propagate regular constraints over the dependence graph of the concatenation constraints. Here, x3 depends on x1 and x2 because uh, the concatenation constraints x equals x1 and, uh, plus x2. Similarly, x5 depends on x3 and x4. So the forward propagation will traverse the, this dependence graph. Firstly, it will select the set of variables x1, x2, and x4 to traverse. The reason is that these three variables has no dependent variables. So we don't need to recompute the regular constraints. But in the second iteration, we selected the variable x3. And this variable actually depends on x1 and x2, but x1, x2 already been traversed. 
So we will use the language of A1 and A2 to re re refine the regular language of A3. We get S3 prime. S3 prime actually the language of S3 prime is the intersection of its original regular expression, regular language, um, and the in and the concatenation of A1 and A2. Similarly, we can compute the variable five. So this is the basic idea of the forward propagation. Now we give the logarithm of this forward propagation. Uh, the while loop here, the call is the while loop, which correspond to, uh, which correspond to the iteration of the iteration of the uh, forward propagation. It first computes the set to be traversed, and then it will refine or modify the regular constraint of this ready set. Um, so actually, it's a similar idea. Um, forward propagation uses two sub procedures ready set. To compute the set of variables and all, uh, whose uh, dependent variables dependent variables have already been computed, and we are long, we all compute, we all re, re modify the regular constraints of the variables in ready set. Here you can see that we are long use the uh, NFA operators like NFA concat and NFA product. We will introduce them later. So now let's discuss about the correctness of the forward propagation. Uh, it was divided into two cases. On the right part, on the right part, where it is case that if there exists a variable v in S such that its language is empty, then it means that we cannot assign a value to the variable v. So the constraint is unsatisfiable. On the left part, actually, it means that for all variables, we we can it's re, it's new regular language after the regular constraint after the propagation are not empty, but in this case is inconclusive. We can have a we can we can we can have a look an example in this example. The first constraint y equals x plus x requires that y should be a string that can be divided into two parts, two same parts. But the second constraint. So then Y must be an A and an AB, the string AB. Here AB are characters. AB cannot be divided into two same strings. So this constraint is not satisfiable, but a forward propagation cannot refine any of the variables regular constraint to empty set. But we try to characterize a subset of the string constraints. We call it tree property. So the tree property will enable us to conclude the string constraint is satisfiable if uh, it uh, if it uh, satisfies then for all variable v its regular new regular constraint after the propagation are not empty. So okay, so now the this is the theorem for the soundness for the unset results. The way the, this is the right part, right part of the circle. And now this uh, we think about the tree property. Tree property actually is very simple to understand. Easy to understand. It just means that the dependence graph of a string constraint should uh, form a tree or forest. So left, uh, the left, uh, the left example is uh, a satisfied tree property. But right hand, right example does not satisfy satisfy tree property because x two has two in degrees. Uh, so the, this theorem specifies that if uh, a string constraint satisfies tree property, then we can conclude that uh, for all variables, if there's a variables new string uh, new string regular constraints are not empty after the propagation, then the, this string constraint is satisfiable. So okay, actually we already finished introducing the uh, for all the propagation. Now let's proceed to the symbolic automator. Library formalization. And we have highlighted two features. The first one is the transition labels in symbolic automata are given by an algebra, such as the interval algebra. I give an example at the bottom. So this automata use intervals for the transition labels. So this kind of design will compress the transition relations and improve the efficiency of our tool. The second one we use is that we use is a bylaws refinement framework to separate abstract level and implementation level formalizations. This is for reusability reasons. B 
because under the abstract level, we use uh, a mathematic concept set to formalize the transition labels. Uh, so the advantage of this kind of uh, formalization is that uh, when we prove the correctness under the abstract level, we don't need to reprove the correctness again under the implementation level for intervals or for other kind of transition labels like Boolean formulas. Okay, so this is the more this is the more details of the formalization. For example, here in NFA we use the record. Uh, Q is the set of status, delta is the transition relations, I and F are as initial and accepting status. Uh, function reachable will check whether there exists the path in the transition relation delta from Q to Q prime, and then as accept, then accept the word W. Word is a string. So NFA accept will check whether our word is, accept, is accepted by NFA A. And the definition big L is the language of an NFA. So now we proceed to the concatenation operation. So we, we just uh, present one operator or automated operation here. The NFA concat basic is just uh, can just construct a new NFA, then concatenate two NFAs, A1 and A2. But this definition correctness relies on the assumption that uh, the set of standards in these two NFA are disjoint. So in order to make it easier to use, so we define the NFA concrete as the, the second definition. It uses the rename NFA rename function and to rename the set of standards into NFA. So actually this makes it our easier to make sure to ensure to in, to ensure the assumption of the correctness of NFA concatenation basic. Okay, so this is the correctness of the concatenation operation. Um, it's, uh, it specifies that the language of the concatenation should be the language of words that, uh, uh, that can be decomposed into two parts. The first part is in A1, uh, language of A1, and the second part should be in the language of A2. Okay, so this is correctness of uh, an concatenation operation. We also formalize other operations like NFA constructions and product as almost uh, the acceptance. So we almost we finish the the introduction. We finish the presentation of the uh, abstract level of formalization. Now let's have a look about the implementation level. And we only briefly give some uh, details of the implementation level. For example, the set of status transitions are stored in red blank tree and at the implementation level. Transition levels are represented by intervals and the certain string uses OCaml code generated by Isabella. The front end is implemented in Scala separately. So finally, let's, uh, um, let's discuss about the evaluation. The benchmark we select is from Kaluza string server. Uh, actually, in the among those tests, uh, more than eighty percent of the tests that can, um, actually are in the string fragment of our string server. So in this table, uh, the unknown set and the onset are the number of tests that our uh, our server returns on unknown result and set and onset result. Um, and average time, average times of average uh, solver time, solving time actually shows that our tools is uh, very efficient, even though compared with the CBC4 is less efficient, but uh, we didn't incorporate a lot of optimizations. So in the future, we will, we will think about to incorporate more optimizations. We will also think about to incorporate more uh, analysis, analyze, analysis such as the backward for water propagation analysis to improve the solved percentage of our tool. Okay, now so now let's um, let's sum, let's uh, proceed to the summary and the contributions. Um, we developed in Isabella for the tool certain string, the first certified implementation of a string solver. We also implement uh, the first certified symbolic automated library. Actually, it can, it is reusable. Uh, it is reusable for other implementation of transition labels. And then finally, so the string was evaluated over the Kaluza benchmarks. Uh, we witnessed the, actually the surprising competitiveness of the, this is simple forward propagation algorithm against more complicated algorithms. 
Okay, so this is the end of our, my presentation. And thanks for your attention. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk and please ask your questions in the Q&A. There, there is a technical problem uh, locally, so they are solving it right now. They need to plug and unplug and hopefully everything will be back to normal. So we're waiting uh, a couple of minutes. In the meantime, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A uh, section. Can you hear us now? Yes, we can. No. You can. Yes, we can. We can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that worked. <laughs> uh, so, so, sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. Um, are there questions either, I guess, here in Philadelphia or um, on Airmeet? Uh, yeah, we have one here. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. And I believe that uh, it was mentioned that back references was one of the feature that in the in the one of the motivation, but. In the formalization, I didn't see that. Uh, have you considered including back references? Um, I think I'm the only one of the authors right here. So uh, no, this is currently not part of the study string, if I believe. And I think, yeah, we did not consider it yet. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. Any, any other questions locally? I don't see any. Oh, there's one on air meet. Hold on just a second. Go ahead and share that. Um, it should be online in just a second. Uh, you used Isabel to certify your solver. Would you consider paying back to Isabel by integrating your solver to improve Isabel's automation? So I guess, um, would this string solver help with uh, the kind of automation done in Isabel? Um, we are very thankful to the people developing Isabel, and uh, of course, we'd like to pay back, but I'm not exactly sure how we would do so. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, of course, pay, uh, paying back was was a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. We are very happy. Uh, I mean, uh, Isabel developers are very happy with this kind of, of uh, um, applications. So I, I was wondering if, for example, uh, this is essentially a solver for lists of character, or perhaps more generally, for arbitrary lists. So um, this decision procedure, essentially, uh, could perhaps be integrated via Isabel Sledgehammer uh, to improve uh, the automation. I mean, just a wild thought. I was just wondering what you think about that. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. But I suspect that we are not quite expressive enough yet for that. No, I mean, uh, for specific, uh, specifically identified problems, right? So Isabel has a set of tools that are uh, increasingly powerful with, with respect to expressiveness and decreasingly uh, automated, right? So this would be one of the things that would be tried when, when solving Isabel, Isabel goals. So if the goal falls in the category that is addressable by your tool, this could, this could uh, work, so. Anyway, I mean, this is really very speculative. I, I was just wondering. Yeah. What thoughts. It's a great idea. I hadn't thought about it. We'll probably discuss it in the group. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess in the interest in, t of, in 